teams for them. What's one thing when you play the Colts you know you're going to get on uh, defense? They're yeah, a great defense. Uh, just play sound football and get to the ball. Um, disruptive um, on the defensive line. Uh, fast full linebackers. Um, you know, got experience back in the, um, in the secondary. So play these guys a lot. So we're definitely familiar with them. They're familiar with us. I mean, it's in the division. I think any division game kind of considered it that way, you know, because you guys, you know, you're you're racing for the top, so it's kind of that that energy, I would say. Some of the talk out of that locker room is they don't have to get themselves hyped up to play you guys. They feel like you guys have to get yourselves hyped up to play them. Well, what do you make of those comments? That's how they feel. I mean, I don't. We still got a lot of them to go play. I mean, that's how they feel. That's how they feel. Um, I guess we'll see on Sunday. Do you have a feel for how you do against a specific team? Like you've had great success against them. Does something like that tend tend to carry over when you go look at at, at stuff getting ready for them? No. Approach like any other game. Um, every game is different. Every game is not going to be the same. Every year is not going to be the same when you play uh, an opponent. So you just take treat it as another game and prepare and get ready for it. Taylor's situation much, and uh, I guess if so, despite the fact he's playing against you guys, are, are you happy to see that, that maybe he's going to get back in action? Um, yeah, I mean, it's um, always good when the guy is able to get back healthy and be able to help his team, him in the RB and us having that collective group. Um, just wish the best for him. Um, you know, don't wish too much of the best for him on Sunday, but, um, you know, glad to see him back healthy and being able to play. Derek, have you ever been a, a, a guy who swaps jerseys with somebody after a game? Uh, I'm hearing that apparently the price has gone up quite a bit uh, for players who do swap jerseys after games. Yeah, I might be selective on who I who I choose from here on out. But I know me and Jonathan uh, swapped last year, and I have uh, uh, Shaquille Leonard's on. So, I mean, I don't know who else uh, uh, I'm going to trade with. But you got to be selective uh, going uh, here going on out. So. Gotta make sure I get the good ones if I want to swap. Is it hard to say no? Huh? It is sometimes. It is sometimes because you see the look on guys' faces. But you know, uh, um, the price of it is is is, is, is pretty high. So, but um, you know, like you said, you just gotta find the right ones, the jerseys you want to swap with, and, and hope it works out. What's the range of that price? I don't. I mean, I don't know the exact price. But, you know, you just, I mean, you don't want to be swapping every game. I don't think that's uh, smart either. But, you know, just some of the guys you play that are great players in the league, elite players, you definitely want to get those jerseys and, um, you know, and uh, be able to swap with those guys. It, it seems like a fun thing between guys. Why, why would the league make it a difficult thing to do? It seems unreasonable, no? I'm not sure. Maybe they getting low on jerseys and, um, you know, get, get new ones in. But... <laughs> Uh, I'm sure guys do it every now and then and um, not try to do it so often as they've done in the past. Do you end up getting all of them framed or you just keep them in a closet somewhere? What do you end up doing? Yeah, I, I keep all of them and then once um, I get time, I eventually get all of them framed and put them up in a man cave or something. Yeah, to be able to showcase them. the best one? My favorite right now? Um, I don't know. Uh, Peyton Manning sent me one last year, so uh, that, I thought that was pretty cool. I have uh, Adrian Peterson's on, so that's that's cool as well. I'm still I'm still waiting on the Chris Johnson one. I don't know when I'm gonna get that, but Chris Johnson, if you're hearing, um, I'm still waiting on that jersey. Um, uh, I got a Christian McCaffrey one. Um, I got I got some pretty good ones, but uh, definitely some more I want to get and, uh, in the near future. I don't know. You you've mentioned Peyton Manning several times after some of your touchdown throws. Did you see him post a video this week saying when he was younger he? Oh, yeah, was I saw that. What I saw you that. Think about that. That was funny. Uh, that was that, that was really funny. Very cool for him to participate in that. Um, got to spend some time with him in the Pro Bowl um, uh, this past season. So you know, it was cool to get to know him a little bit more. Did he send you that jersey after you threw the touchdown last year? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. He put young Peyton Manning on there too. So that was that was kind of cool. Broncos. <laughs> Uh, those Colts, those Colts. Things like that. Uh, how much fun have you had doing those Heisman House commercials in the past? And those sorts of things, and what's and what's it like getting together with those guys? Yeah, it's cool because um, you get to uh, spend time with the with the legends, um, the greats, and you know talk to them, get to know them, and um, see what they're all about. Um, so I'm like a kid in the candy store, being around all the 
all the great legends um, that came before me in the game and um, just talking to them, spending time with them. And it's a weekend for all, all of us to get together, get to know each other a little bit more. Still friendly with Shaq Leonard, and what's maybe that relationship been like as you guys have competed against each other over the years? Yeah, I haven't talked to him in a while, but I mean we're we're still cool. Uh, glad to see him back healthy, and get Maggie out there playing football, um, doing something that he loves to do, and um, you know it's going to be a, a battle on Sunday. Thanks, 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 What's I guess it like for you, Tim, as you kind of maybe start to get a little bit healthier up front uh, you know, cool. with, with Nicholas and, and Peter back at practice? And then what's the decision like and when to incorporate those guys back in and what you do? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think we just got to keep continuing to see how the week goes in terms of how they prepare and how they practice and, and where they're feeling. Um, and then, yeah, just like we talked about last week, right, finding finding the best, the best five, the best sum of the five. Uh, you know, that's going to go out there and give us the best chance to, to win a game. Are you confident there's nothing involved in who's playing left tackle Sunday outside of who's blocking the best? Uh, I'm not sure what you're trying to ask. There's no uh, status, contract. Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty clear here that with, with the way Coach Rabel runs, runs things, it's whoever's going to give us an opportunity to win the game is going to be the guy that's out there playing. Yeah, um, you know, he's he's getting work at, you know, um, getting back in the swing of things. He hasn't played football for, for you know, however long it's been. So uh, he's doing everything he can to make sure he's comfortable being being ready to go uh, do whatever we ask him to do. This might be more of a general line question, but when you say put the best five out there, why doesn't that position rotate as much as other position groups do? I think because they work in combination with one another. And, again, that's just my my own personal opinion. Um, there's so much that goes into – to the, the different combinations, the communication, um, how it physically feels, um, you know, the, the the different traits that they may have in order how much I need to how much I need to help somebody if I'm working in combination with them. So I think there's just uh, way more cohesiveness that goes on with that position as opposed to some of the other positions. Mike uh, didn't hesitate when I asked if if he paused on whether to run the jump pass play. Uh, at the goal line, if they call the timeout, what kind of what is kind of going through your mind as you got the play called? They call the timeout. Yeah, um, you know, I thought we were we were in a an, an unusual formation. Um, it didn't concern me, you know, when when you've got guys that are able to go out there and execute and guys that you trust. Um, you know, it's it's difficult to to, to stop a, a unit when they're playing like that. So, I felt com comfortable and confident. Uh, that Derek would be able to make a good decision, um, and uh, we like to play. How important is it for you to kind of take some deep shots on a, on a fairly regular basis, maybe even even if they're not successful, is, is it important to have that element? Yeah, I think anytime you, you have the, the the threat of, you know, getting behind a defense, I think that, that changes. Um, if nothing else, it changes the mindset of the corners. Um, so I want to continue to, to mix those in. Um, along with being able to take some shorter to intermediate routes just to make sure that, that again, uh, we want to make the defense defend every blade of grass. I know you can only take so much from, from past games, but Derek, while you've done well in the division the last three years, has, has run really well in the division, mm -hmm. has run really well against the Colts. How much do you look at that as you prepare for this? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, when you look at Derek, he's, he's had a lot of success against a lot of teams. You know, each, each year is a different year. Each team's a different team. Um, so we're going to do everything we can to make sure that uh, our, our game plan is sound um, and is take advantage of, of what our guys do well um, and trying to put them in the best position to, to be successful. Using Tajay Spears on like that cheap motion and some mm -hmm. of the things that you do, where did you get that and, and what made you want to use him specifically? Yeah, um, you know, he's, he's uh, when he's in the game, uh, you know, my guess is people are probably paying attention to him. Um, when, when he's when he's touched the ball, good things have happened, uh, and and just continuing to find different ways to to stress the defenses, um, you know, different types of motions, different types of formations, whatever it may be, just to 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 change the picture for him a little bit, um, and and to give our guys a any any type of advantage that that we can find. What's Chris Moore, not necessarily a blazer, but done pretty well in those deep catches. Yeah, I mean he's pretty fast. Um, you know, I don't know if he's like. He, he's in, in, in talking about play speed, like 
he plays to whatever whatever his time speed is like he's he's playing at it um and and he's done a great job of of earning the trust of the quarterback throughout the weeks of practice being out here and and uh, uh making the plays when when the ball finds him and that's carried over to, to sundays he plays he plays really fast um he's he's always running and, and he has the trust of the quarterback what do you do in terms of kyle phillips back and utilizing him in this offense mm -hmm. yeah um continuing to find find ways to get him to do things that that he's going to be successful at um again he's you know with that wide receiver room right now it's uh, it's unique in the fact that they all kind of have a little different skill set uh and and finding the sweet spot and making sure that um you know everyone's kind of getting a little piece of the game plan in terms of in terms of putting them in in spots where where, where they have a, a an opportunity to go out and win you talk about changing the picture for for spears a little bit did those quicker, shorter pitches to Derek against the Bengals change the picture a little bit? A little bit for him. Sure. Um, again, I, I, I think anytime you you can you know make a minor tweak that may not be super expensive uh, for us in terms of um, you know us making a wholesale change or, or us having a completely change of technique and give a different uh, picture to the defense. I think that's. That whenever we can do that, we're going to find ways to do that because, again, I, I, I think it's advantageous to us. When you have a guy like Jeff on Sunday that an eligible guy report is eligible, or whether it's Jeff or whether it's an extra tackle or something, mm -hmm. is it hard not to kind of telegraph what's coming, or do you, do you have to, like, guard against that? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, as long as, as, long, as long as we're doing a good job with our self-scout and understanding that, hey, every time so-and-so is in the game, we're not – doing X, Y, or Z, um, you know, it's it's like a baseball pitcher. Uh, you need two good pitches. You need a fastball and a changeup. So um, doing whatever we can to make sure that, that we're majoring in, in, in what, we're, what we're best at and then having compliments off those things. You hear a lot about, like, you guys wanting to stay in that third and manageable range, staying ahead of the stakes. You mm -hmm. did that really well last week. Yeah. Now with a guy like Kyle potentially getting back in the fold, how does his skill set – potentially help you do that more frequently yeah um you know it's uh it's a good question um he's a guy that gets open quickly for the quarterback so uh you know whether whether that's on first down second down whenever that may be uh you know any, anybody that that can that can get open fast uh, is going to help us stay on schedule Tim, obviously Josh Riley made a couple of plays for you last week mm -hmm. do you anticipate him getting more opportunities as he gets more comfortable in what he's doing in your offense yeah I think just like anyone you know when when, when they uh when our guys do a good job studying, preparing, putting in the time, and, and showing that they're going to be able to go out there, and, and we can trust them to go out there and execute, they're you know, they're going to earn more opportunities. I know the game plan different each week, but how much of that period in the second quarter Sunday, where you score three touchdowns, about six minutes, be something guys can look at as a confidence builder, saying this is how good we can be? When yeah, I mean, I think there's there's examples of that throughout you know throughout throughout the however many games we've played so far. Um, I just thought that our guys did the best job being more consistent with that throughout the game on Sunday. Um, you know, you look at uh, – God, I, I don't want to talk about that game anymore, but you look at the, the two-minute drive at the end of the Cleveland game, like you move the ball. Um, you look at, at spurts in, in, in the Chargers game. You look at spurts in the, in the Saints game. There's, there's evidence of us being able to do that. Um, it's just we got to continue to strive to, to be as consistent as, as possible because I think we showed on Sunday that when we do that, uh, we can do some pretty good things. Does it help for a runner like Derek, especially, who sometimes needs like a step or two to get that full head of steam? If he's not getting nicked with contact, you know, behind the line. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, everybody, I think that's running the ball. If, if we can, if we can get him in the line of scrimmage clean, it's going to be better. Um, our, our guys did a really good job of being able to, to cover them up, get him rolling. You know, from everybody, from from the five up front, the tight ends, um, you know, the wideouts, and some of those situations where, where we ask them to come in and do some of the dirty work, um, and and our guys do a great job of taking a lot of pride in that, uh, which which it's not like that everywhere. So, um, I think that's a testament to our position coaches. I think it's a testament to the type of guys that we have here in the building um, that take pride. And in, in while there there may not be a huge stat line for some people, but they know that they went out there and, and did their job, and and, and that helped their you know, had the day that he had and, and, and helped our offense have the day that they had. So, um, yeah, it's, it's it, you know, it's a collective effort there. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thank you, guys. Thanks, Tim.
Are we going to ask about uh, Lipscomb yeah. Ensworth? Is that the first? The yeah, what's, what's the latest one? They won. We we did. I'm sorry. Yeah. Lipscomb Lipscomb won. It was 20 to 12. So sixth grade championship. Uh, my son had to come to the walkthrough right afterwards to uh, let everyone know that he they won the championship. So it was a good game. Thursday night football tonight. Page High School Hillsboro should be exciting. Okay. So. Oh. Really even or? Yeah, I think it's pretty even. So we'll we'll see how it plays out tonight. I'll be able to get to about halftime of that game, so it should be should be fun. Right. Does, does Kyle, if if he's ready to go uh, this week, is, does he step right back in? As yeah, I, I think, you know, today will be a big day for him. Also, uh, you know, tomorrow we'll, we'll get him out there and, and work him out, catching punts more and more and, and see how he feels and, and then kind of make a decision based on that. But really happy with what Mason did last week and, and the week beforehand. He, he really stepped up and did a great job. You know, that was a that was a big return uh, last week that we had for 21 yards. Uh, he did a great job, you know, getting upfield, making a guy miss, and, and getting 21 yards. And they also had a penalty on that. So big momentum flip for us. Uh, so we're really happy what Mason did too last week. I guess what you'll see from Kyle, I guess, uh, in practice is just to kind of smooth catching the ball and and, and getting getting out of the uh, out of the hole. Yeah, uh, you know, we'll, we'll obviously go in there and look at him, see how he's going to move lateral, how he has to go back, maybe to catch a, a bigger punt. But, uh, you know, then just going up there and getting upfield, trying to make some guys miss. So we're going to try to do everything to simulate what he would get into a game uh, in order for him to feel comfortable uh, playing this week if he does. Your return team uh, uh, on punt uh, returns has had success, whether it was Kiaris, uh, Mason. How much of the uh, the, the returning is uh, the coverage guys in front of them, the blocking that you're getting? Oh, it's big. I mean, they're, they're just as big as part as the guys that are back there catching the ball, and, and they take pride in it. And, you know, we talk about winning on the outside a lot. Uh, those guys have to do a really – it's a tough job. You know, they might be single press against a gunner, um, and they got to do a really good job of staying with a guy 30, 40 yards down the field. So it's a big part of what we do and what we teach. Uh, and the guys take a lot of pride in it. And uh, so we just tell them it's, it's not always the guy that's back there catching the punts. It's the other guys that are there to help them get 21 yards or get 30 yards. Uh, so it's, it's a definitely a team effort. And, uh, you know, Mason would probably be the first one to tell you, too, that uh, those guys do a great job blocking for him. He hasn't done a lot of kicking off uh, last couple of years. and. What he has hasn't been a big touchback guy, but how confident were you when he got here that he could handle that? And have you been pleasantly surprised? Yeah, I mean, that was one of the first things we talked to him about, you know, hey, listen, we know you didn't do it as much uh, there in New England, but, uh, you know, we could ask you to do it a little bit for us, too. And, and he didn't have really an issue. And once we saw him do some kickoffs um, for us in practice, you know, it was it was pretty easy as far as hey, if we want to touch back or if we don't. Uh, so each week again, we'll we'll play it by ear and see what we we feel comfortable with. But uh, really, with happy with what he's doing. If we ask him to hit a touchback or if we ask them to kick it short and then to return it, we feel pretty comfortable with him doing that. When you look at Kyle and what he can bring as a punt returner, how much do you have to weigh that with the injury history and also? wanting him to be out there on offense and the value he has there. Yeah. Um, you know, we want to keep him on the field as much as we possibly can because, you know, he's a weapon on offense too. So uh, we're going we're gonna to do everything that we can if he's back there catching punts for us uh, to protect him. Um, you know, and that starts again, the guys on the outside and then and the interior guys. So uh, it's, it's big that we always have that in the back of our mind. But, you know, Kyle's out there for a reason. And if we feel comfortable with him being back there and returning punts, we're going to we're going to do that. Who's your alternative at this point? Well, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, Monty Hooker's done it before in the past. So um, he would be a, a, a guy that could be back there at any point in time. So um, he would be another guy that would be an option back there. When you say protect him, is it possible that like you maybe encourage him to fair catch a couple balls that another guy would return because you just want to keep him from taking a hit or like what does that look like? No, um, you know he's going to be back there if he's up. It's 
he's going to be back there to return punts. But we're going to tell him to be smart. You know, if, if the ball is hung up in the air for quite some time, we don't need him to be the guy that's going to go in there and try to make four or five guys miss when they're right in front of us. We're going to be smart about it. You know, we always talk about being aggressive but not reckless. Uh, so, you know, we'll talk with him about that. And uh, if he does have an opportunity to go back there and return one, he'll do it. Is that a hard thing to get a guy to buy into because most of these guys are hardwired to be as aggressive as possible? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's funny just talking to those guys all the time. Well, coach, I want to make a play. I want to make a play. And we get that. And we love that about them. Um, but again, it's, it's one of those deals that we have to really sit them down, talk to them. Hey, this is why we want to do that. Um, this is why we do want to return it. Uh, so that's just the thing that we'll continue to talk to those guys about, um, just being smart football players. There's some intrigue there, whether roof's open, roof's closed. I mean, how much difference does it make there as far as, you know, for kicking or punts, uh, just how much it affects distance? Yeah, that, well, that was one of the first things that we brought up to the guys. Um, I showed them a clip. And I said, hey, what do you guys see? And they're talking about, well, I see this formation. I see this. I said, no, really look at it. Uh, because, you know, sometimes they'll have the roof open. Sometimes you'll see a little bit of wind. I know uh, Stonehouse was talking about the banners were moving a little bit at some point in time uh, last year. So, you know, that's something that we talked to those guys about. Hey, yeah, it's a dome, but they can open up and, you know, there could be sun um, involved in there. So we'll have them get out there early again, like we always do. Uh, if it is open, great. You know, we'll be out there taking a look at the sun. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Greg. What's the uh, biggest key when you're facing a quarterback that you've never seen before? Yeah, I think uh, really with him, just understanding his skill set, right? All the things he brings to the table. He's he's a freak athlete, super talented. Um, the ability to run the ball, the ability to throw the ball, it's all there. So we just got to understand that every play, he's going to be a factor. We got to be keyed in on him. Two sets of theories, I guess, when a lot of teams go when they play a rookie quarterback. Some people want to throw the kitchen sink at him and make him make quick decisions, speed him up, and others want to lay back in coverage and disguise and confuse. What's what's your what what's the best approach? Yeah, I think everybody's got their their own way of doing things. I think ultimately it's a combination of the two, and I mean we'll kind of see which direction we go here come Sunday. Anthony Richardson maybe gives you. Guys you've worked against before that maybe helps you in this game. Yeah, I mean, uh, the the running's unique. Um, I would say he's he he's got the ability to hurt you like Lamar. Um, different type of runner. He's probably more of a Josh Allen type of runner. Um, just explosive speed though can take it the home run. But he's a he's a powerful, strong dude with the ball in his hands. It's going to be tough to tackle him one on one. Um, and then just with the arm strength, I think he can he can sling it. He's got a cannon. He can launch it. He can throw it wherever he wants, uh, different angles. Um, does a good job on the RPO game, getting it out of his hands quick. So, I mean, he's a, he's a talented kid. What does a good job. All the design runs. And it seems like they do that a lot with him. Is that unique to what you've seen before? Yeah, I mean, you, you see it with different teams. I mean, some teams do it more than others, but we've seen it in the past, obviously. Lamar's done that stuff. They did some of that stuff with Hurts and Philly last year. Um, even Josh Allen on certain situational things. There's some of those quarterback design runs that show up. Um, so it's something we got to be prepared for. They're, they're going to mix it in. They're going to have it. I mean, we saw one against Deshaun in Cleveland down in the red zone. So um, it's becoming more and more with these quarterbacks, just their ability coming from college. I think it's becoming more of an aspect of the game that we got to be ready for each week with these quarterbacks. Sean, just there was so much emphasis after that game of wrapping up, finishing the tackles when you've got the quarterback. How much of an emphasis is that and what can be done to kind of improve? Yeah, a very similar mindset. Um, he's strong. We got to make sure we stay on our feet, right? Like we go in to get a sack. We can't launch. We can't, we can't try to take him down and not stay on our feet because he's going to shrug you off. Um, we got to continue to be relentless. The more guys we can get to him, the better off we're going to be. Not relying on one guy to be able to bring him down. Um, and so, but the biggest thing for me is making sure we're staying up and not falling off. Like, and if we stay on our feet, we got a better shot of not falling off of them. Gibson looked like he's a good fit for your scheme, and, and you know, when a guy takes advantage of, of small opportunities like that, does he earn more? Yeah, time? absolutely. He's done a good job since he's been here. Uh, 
again, you get in here late, miss most of training camp, and you're kind of thrown in the fire. There's a lot of catch up that's going on um, from a terminology standpoint, from a technique standpoint, just how we operate the day to day. Um, and I, I think he's done a great job since he's been here. Great seeing him last week, take advantage of his opportunity, make a play. And ultimately, yeah, if, if you're going to make plays like that, you need to be out there more. What's the key defensively in the red zone for you guys this week with the Colts team that is, is clearly been efficient down there? Yeah, they're really good. They are really good down there. Um, I think the, the biggest thing, and we talk about it every week, is number one, don't let them run it in, right? We got to make sure we're not allowing them to run the, uh, run the ball in the end zone. Um, there's a lot of things that come into play. Obviously, this week with the quarterback run game and everything that is, and then and then when uh, when we're there in coverage, we got to be able to challenge, play aggressive, play square. Nowhere helps that when we when we have help. Um, to me, red zone always comes down to our execution, right? Our ability to execute versus whatever we see, because there's always going to be scheme plays down there every single week, and we got to make sure we're locked in on making sure we got have eleven guys doing our job. When you talk to the DBs against a quarterback like this. I mean, what do you tell them? Where is, is this a week where you say you guys may have to cover a little bit longer than normal? Yeah, the play extension's there. Um, we got to make sure that we're, we're grabbing on, latching on the guys. We got to be great with our eyes as plays get extended. Um, we just can't lose guys because that's when those X plays are going to show up. And if he's able to extend and we, we don't grab a guy and the guy breaks loose and gets behind us, that's when some of those plays are going to show up. So we got to make sure we get attached in zone, right? Those are probably the more difficult ones, right? Making sure because zone coverage turns into man pretty quickly when that play gets extended. Um, and then in man coverage, we just got to make sure we're doing our job and staying on our man. How much does the RPO game force you to make sure your guys are disciplined and staying with their assignments and in their lanes? Yeah, there's a lot to it. There is. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, I was, I came up in the triple option offense coaching O line uh, when I started coaching. So, there's similarities to it, but instead of a pitch man, there's a throw man, right? So um, it's going to take all 11. We got to be sound. We got to understand our responsibility. We got to take pre snap information and use it to our advantage. Um, but everybody's got to be locked in, and we got to communicate and help, help the guy next to us understand what's coming. Do you go in with the mentality that you're going to see Kane on Sunday? Absolutely. I mean, I fully expect it. And if he, if he doesn't, he doesn't. Um, Elite back in this league. If he's available, I imagine he's going to play. How good is Moss been for them? Too? Good, really good. I think he's running hard. I think he's been able to show some patience to find some of those holes late. Um, I mean, we played against him obviously when he was in Buffalo, so I think he's done a really good job. Has teams maybe tried to attack Gibbons in a way to, to uh, attack his weaknesses? I know he's not the, the most athletic guy on your defense, and, what? but he's appeared in the in the right places consistently and been very good at that. How have they tried maybe to go at him and, and fail? Yeah, I mean, you saw the one, uh, he made the play when, when they tried to attack him down the middle of the field uh, with Boyd last week. And one thing about Gibby, he's, he's really smart. I think he understands kind of the game, whatever he might lack a step or so, he makes up for with his intangibles and knowing where to be. and. He's not going to be caught behind. Like some of these fast guys at times get caught behind and they don't look as fast, right? Um, so, I mean, he's he's been consistent. Um, I think the guys trust him when he's out there. I know I trust him to go out there and do his job every single snap. And, and he, really, he's making the plays that he's supposed to make. No plays last week that were over 20 after I think 12 in the first three. Were you guys doing things differently or, or did you just do them better? Or yeah, that? I think we played better. As a whole, I think the rush was better. I think uh, the coverage was better. Um, it takes all 11. It's never one guy. I get it. There's going to be some one-on-ones at times down the field that they might win and we might lose. Um, but for the most part, it takes all 11. Everybody executing the coverage properly. Everybody playing with technique and fundamentals and affecting the quarterback is just as much coverage as it is the rush. Thank you.